Okay, so uh, our, our, our next speaker um, um, is Daniel Hubble, who is the technical evangelist for Microsoft Corp. His motto is, be brave, and even if you're not, pretend to be. No one can tell the difference. I like that one. So let's welcome him to the stage. Thank you, Jill. Is this going? Excellent. Uh, I'm going to scoot this back so it's not in my face. So um, I, uh, as Jill mentioned, I'm the technical evangelist for the accessibility team at Microsoft, uh, which basically means my role is to work with technology that enables people. Seniors falls into the, the category of things that we talk about. And uh, Jill asked me to come and just briefly talk about some projects that we've been working on over the last few years uh, under this theme of constructing a new vision of aging. And I'm going to lead you down uh, a path, uh, telling a few stories about some people we've met along the way um, related to these projects uh, that have spanned, I think, since around 2008 till today. Um, but I want to start with uh, first recognizing Gary, and I think he uh, just stepped out, who uh, just spoke with Jill, uh, and I think it's fantastic the work that they're doing um, as a father of someone uh, with type 1 diabetes myself. I think the research that they're doing into how to integrate the, the information that you can gather from devices that exist today into cars um, uh, is phenomenal and tremendous to me. So I just actually wanted to give him my personal and public uh, recognition for that work uh, with the hopes to encourage to see that continue. Uh, I'm going to follow that with a statistic that we've learned through the, the projects that we've done that was quite frankly a little staggering to us. We, we think of seniors and, and I, boomers slides into this and as I talk about seniors today I'm going to talk about the older generation or, or as uh, uh, some people refer to them as the greatest generation uh, which is the, the, the older than boomers uh, segment of the population. And a figure that we actually discovered, and I have to find the right clicker here, uh, a figure that we discovered through all of this is that there are more than 2 million homebound seniors in the United States. And this is a staggering number of people. Uh, I'm sorry? That's now. That's not the future. This is today. There are more than 2 million people in the United States over the age of 80 that are homebound for whatever reason, whether that's health, whether that's mental wellness, physical wellness, they are unable to leave their house and connect with the rest of society. And this is a big challenge. And, and we were approached in 2008 by the city of Miami because they were trying to move into a, a new world of uh, digital governance. How do we connect people more digitally in their community? And technology, as you'll hear from speakers today, is a key to unlocking the connections between people. But unfortunately, this senior population, particularly those that are homebound, that didn't have other connections to, their, um, to the networks in their community, uh, were more and more falling behind in what uh, their uh, knowledge was in being able to use a technology. And they were being left behind. So we set out to think about how can we help revitalize senior centers. Senior centers in the traditional and sort of analog sense have been a place where seniors could come together, take classes, there were social events. Um, they were all about the real world of community. But the one thing that every senior center in the US has had or shared in common is the fact that you needed to be able to go to it. And if you think about the populations of people that I just mentioned that don't have access physically to go to a senior center for the services that are either being provided by the community or by the city, there was a big barrier there. So the city of Miami came to us and they said, we need, we have a problem, and we have come to learn it was more of a perceived problem than a real problem, which is people over the age of 80 don't like technology, don't want to use technology, and can't use technology. Microsoft, can you help us solve this problem? We said, OK, let's see if we can put some thought together and figure out a way that we can solve this problem. And the city of Miami developed a project called Elevate Miami, and it was around digital literacy amongst their community. 
all members of, of the community. This included uh, the, the high immigrant population of Miami as well as seniors. And what we did is we came to the conclusion that technology itself wasn't the barrier or the inclination to use technology, but in most cases it was actually the way technology was being delivered and the way that it was being, um, uh, seniors were being educated about technology. So we developed what we called the Senior PC. It was a project where we took uh, an OEM partner and uh, we, uh, we partnered with an OEM, we had, took some other technology and we added on to what was a base model of a computer that was given to a senior. We pre-configured options like magnification on the screen for larger text. We uh, used larger keyboards. In some cases, we actually used alternate keyboards rather than a standard QWERTY style keyboard. And we paired that with classes that these seniors could go and participate in. Now, Miami, we, were, uh, we weren't trying to address the homebound issue, so at this point, we were still working with seniors that could go to a center. But the success of this was having seniors come learn about technology and seeing the 15 participants at the end of this not only wanting to come into class, but they were then teaching others in the senior center itself. So there were a number of good learnings that we had here. Um, I have this quote, uh, which is really that brick and mortar senior centers are changing and they're leaving behind their old image as simply an activity and meal center as they evolve into dynamic social and information hubs. And this is really what the outcome of the project that we worked on with Miami was, is really realizing that this is the future of what the senior center really is going to be. I need to move down in my notes. So, after we completed Miami, we decided to take this a step further and really try to figure out how we might be able to address this homebound seniors issue. The city of New York came to us and they have more than, than 200 senior facilities in the greater New York metropolitan area. They spend a tremendous, hundreds of millions of dollars a year, uh, probably upwards of, of several billion dollars a year on senior care, social services for seniors, the senior facilities that they, they either own and operate and or um, contract out with private organizations uh, that are heavily subsidized. Um, but the population of homebound seniors in New York was beginning to tax the social services infrastructure in a way that they didn't know how to address. So we came in and we developed this virtual senior center project and uh, on the, the photograph on the screen here, you'll see a woman who's taking an art class. It's hard to see, but there's a computer kiosk that was actually on a rolling cart next to her. And on that cart was a touchscreen computer with a keyboard. And you can faintly make it out, but there's a picture of a gentleman who's actually Skyping into the class from his home. His name is Milton. And this is a quote from Milton. Before this project, I was bored to death. I was just waiting for my time to finish. Now, all of a sudden, I'm wide awake and I'm alive again. What we did is we went to Milton's house and he was one of six participants that par uh, were a part of this uh, pilot. And we went to Milton's house and we connected him with a computer, a touchscreen computer that was very simply organized. It literally had six to eight icons on the screen and every day, the administrator, the IT administrator at the senior center would go in and program in which classes were going to be virtually available that day. That could be art class. It could be mahjong in the cafeteria at lunchtime with some other uh, members in the senior facility. It could have been a dance class, a computer class. There were, there were dozens of classes that they would serve. And because we designed these kiosks to be movable, and go move throughout the facility, they could really apply any class in a virtual setting. Milton had lived, uh, he was a very social person. He had been, for most of his life, life a salesman. At one point in time, he uh, was a buyer for Corvette's uh, uh, 
uh, what do they call it, uh, department store chain in, in New York if you're from the East Coast. Um, for the longest time, I thought he sold cars, but I was apparently wrong. Um, so he uh, uh, was a very social person, but his health had deteriorated to a point where he couldn't physically move. And I have a great story about how we actually, as part of this, uh, one of the icons on his screen that we set him up with, if you're familiar with uh, Webvan, uh, which is one of the grocery, grocery delivery companies uh, that operates in the New York area, his daughter, once a week, who was very busy herself, family of three or four kids, and, and obviously had a busy schedule, but would take one evening after work to come over and visit her dad. And that visit would entail her walking in, saying, hi, dad, what do you need from the store? Going to the store, which if you're from New York, you know is not necessarily the easiest thing to go do, uh, depending on where you live. Take some time, go to the store, get the groceries, come back two or three hours later with all of the stuff that he needed his errands. She would say, I love you, Dad. See you next week. Well, we showed him how he could use his computer, which, by the way, prior to this, he had actually never used a computer before. Uh, Milton was 86 years old when he was uh, participating in this project in 2011. And... We set him up on a web van with his daughter's credit card. He always loves to point out. And he said that now I can do my own grocery shopping and I actually get four hours a week to sit and hang out and chat with my daughter. Now, this isn't virtually connecting him to anything other than grocery shopping, but what it did is it allowed time for his care providers to actually spend in a more quality setting. So quickly moving along, the next piece of this was how do we then expand this into creating more of a health um, spin to this? So in the Los Angeles, uh, we actually created something that we call the Exer Gamers Wellness Club. And we connected four senior centers in the Los Angeles area with uh, Xboxes and the Microsoft Connect uh, motion control game system and we started by doing a baseline health assessment. And then we set up groups at each of the centers where they would virtually compete with each other. And at the end of the project, and, and actually every week along the way, we would actually do a snapshot of each of their um, health uh, indicators, blood pressure and, and weight, so on and so forth. And by the end of the six months, well, anecdotal, because this wasn't a scientific survey and it was certainly not done in a scientific uh, uh, method, the anecdotal evidence says that the more that these seniors were active, the better their health became. Uh, this isn't rocket science, but it was about creating an environment that gave these seniors something fun to do. Uh, and this is a photograph of some of the women uh, participating in uh, a dance class. So where does this lead us to, I want to leave you with a quick story about one woman who participated in our New York project who loved to talk about modern land. Uh, this is Ethel, wrong button, this is Ethel. Apologize for the quality of the photograph. It was the only one I had. Um, Ethel was 103 years old, had never used a computer before in her life, First time we gave it to her, she said she wanted to throw it out the window. I kid you not. By the end, she was saying, and I quote, I'm going to read this to you because I thought it was good. She says, I'm actually in the best place now, modern land. I love it here. And we had connected her not only to her center. Here is a quote where she was following a dance class and she says, I can see them dancing and I feel like dancing myself. And she actually talked about getting up behind her chair to hold herself up so she could dance as she was watching the people in her center dance. She Skyped every day with her daughter in California, who was, by the way, in her 80s. Um, and so this was a way that we could really connect. And I think Ethel, at 103 years old, really proves or disproves the theory that seniors are afraid of technology and that they can't and won't learn something new she can prove that it can happen. So thank you.